Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video we'll be doing the full review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 uh, Plus and I've been actually using it for the past one week so I'll give you an idea I have divided the review between the pros and cons so I'll talk about that uh, and share my experience and uh, guys uh, this uh, Note 10 Plus is a massive phone as you can see it's having that 6.8 inch uh, screen so it's actually really big and uh, before uh, I talk about the pros and cons here are the quick specs as you can see it's uh, having that massive 6.8 inch uh, uh, quad HD plus uh, screen and the screen quality is really good it's powered by the new Exynos uh, octa-core processor uh, it comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM 256 gigabytes of storage has a triple camera at the back front facing camera is a 10 megapixel and other specs are on the screen for your reference so let's quickly break it down between the pros and cons first let's talk about what do I like about it those are the pros and the first thing is the 6.8 inch screen yes it's actually pretty big but the highlight thing is the screen and the quality of the screen that samsung has put is actually really good on this one the colors look very good and it doesn't hurt your eyes even after extended usage and the screen quality is really good it can go actually pretty bright in outdoor lighting so one of the best amulet screens but again in terms of technical specification it's still a 60 hertz screen not a 90 hertz screen but nevertheless uh, i would say if you uh, put a lot of uh, amulet smartphones side by side people will pick up this one because of the color reproduction and everything just looks really good on this one and in fact uh, i would say watch the other video that i posted last week uh, about some of the tweaks that you should do if you're getting this note 10 or the note 10 plus because by default it's set to full hd plus you should change it to quad hd plus so the screen is a big plus point in my frank opinion now second thing is that it's a very big phone and i was also very much worried how would be uh, it in your hand and here surprisingly it's actually not that heavy uh, it's actually pretty light for the size and many of the uh, what if my uh, relatives when I, uh, I told them to hold the phone they said uh, yes they thought there will be more heavy here than what it is in fact it's lighter in weight compared to the even the note 9 so in terms of weight balance they have done a very good job but still it's a very uh, what a big phone as you can see I'm holding it and I have to really stretch my hands to actually hold it now moving to uh, this one also has stereo speakers and I would say the stereo speakers are implemented well on this one uh, the main speaker is here and the earpiece is also actually pretty loud and the sound comes out from that so the speaker quality is actually really good on this one you don't have to worry about it and I would say the speaker quality is slightly better than the Galaxy S10 plus so good stereo speakers on uh, this one uh, but one thing to note is that when I was keeping the volume at the maximum level uh, above 90% you could say uh, the back used to vibrate a little bit uh, that is something that you have to note but again I've noticed this with many other the phones with uh, what is a good uh, stereo speakers when you keep it on max volume the back tends to vibrate a little bit that's the same case on this one also now if we talk about uh, the fingerprint uh, here also they have gone with the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner as you can see this is the point and it actually works very well uh, but again um, you have to get used to this i was using the s10 plus earlier so i'm pretty used to this one because that one also has that but it'll take you a day or two to get used to this one and as you can see you should enable this always on display because that will give you an idea where to put your uh, thumb on this because you have to place it like this for it to unlock and it works about 95 percent of the time but one thing to notice that if there is even slight moisture in your fingers it this uh, ultrasonic fingerprint scanner uh, simply does not work so that is something you have to note sometimes if your fingers are sweaty you have to wipe it otherwise it simply does not work uh, again some of you have asked no what do you say iris scanning or uh, stuff that we had on the note 9 uh, so that is missing but you do have that face unlock but i would say uh, the face unlocking is not as secure as this ultrasonic fingerprint scanner now moving to another uh, thing is that this one actually comes with the new exynos uh, 9825 uh, that's the new octa core processor uh, it's based on the 7 nanometer process and i would say it handles everything fine uh, on this one i haven't noticed any lagginess or anything in general usage i would say it's really fast and as you can see also so many apps are open here 
and i don't have to worry uh, a bit about it because uh, the ram management is really good again it has that 12 gigabytes of ram i think so that is also a very big thing on this one so in terms of ram management and, uh, and that stuff you don't have to worry about it it's done very well on this phone you are, it doesn't lag or, or do anything and again i frankly feel you don't uh, technically need 12 gigabytes of ram but you do have 12 gigabytes of ram on this one another thing that i like is that the minimum storage that you're getting on this one is again 256 gigabytes of internet internal storage and yes you can it's a hybrid slot that you have so you can have uh, actually put a micro sd card if you really want but uh, frankly feel even in the base variant that comes with 256 gb storage uh, storage is not an issue and the storage is actually really fast on this one so in those aspects you don't have to worry the hardware that you're getting is uh, top notch and also this one ui is good i haven't noticed any lag again uh, i would say watch the other video that i have posted uh, which uh, uh, tells you some of the tweaks that you should actually do to make it even more faster in terms of uh, UI by reducing the animation lag and all those things. Now moving to cellular call quality, I tested this one here in uh, Hyderabad with Airtel and Geo. And here I would say uh, the cellular call quality, I'm talking about cellular call quality was very good. The earpiece uh, is actually good and you can even take calls via speakerphone. Uh, th those were also very good. Now if we move to network reception, I would say the network reception is above average. but again haven't i would not say that it is among the best in fact if i even compare it with this is the samsung galaxy s10 plus i would say uh, the samsung galaxy s10 plus at least for me here with airtel is giving me slightly better network reception compared to this one for example in this uh, what do you say this room airtel the signal level is very low and it is just hovering around the one bar and sometimes the call get cut but with the s10 plus uh, uh, I can actually, uh, I generally get two bars and I can take calls without disconnecting. So uh, the network reception is much better than many of the other phones because many of the other phones in this area simply just cut off. Uh, on this, I could take some calls, but again, it was not the among the best. For example, the best experience that I had was with the S10 Plus in terms of network reception. Again, if you are not in an area with very low network reception, that doesn't matter. But uh, that is something that I have noticed. Now, we talk about the battery capacity. It's a 4300 milliampere battery. And I really like the fact that uh, we are getting that 25 watt charger in the box. In fact, this phone actually supports 45 watts, uh, uh, what do you say, quick uh, charging, but you have to buy that charger separately. But even with the 25 watt uh, supplied charger, when this was around, uh, I, I don't recall, uh, about 12 or 13 percent, I put it in charge and within one hour it was completely charged so significant improvement i would say compared to earlier uh, flagship smartphones of samsung that used to come with a 15 watt charger this one is a 25 watt charger and it charges really really quickly uh, but yes if you want to go, uh, charge even faster a 45 watt charger is supported by this device now if you talk about the battery life uh, here i would say the battery life is again pretty good uh, but i won't say i have that is the best that i have seen uh for example, the battery life is actually pretty close to the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Uh, and in terms of what do you say, uh, standby time, it is actually uh, pretty good. If you're sort of an average user, you can stretch it to about one and a half days. But if you're sort of a heavy business user with two SIMs, uh, I would say it would give you a screen on time anywhere between five to about six hours of uh, screen on time. And at the end of the day also, let's say morning eight o'clock if you leave, by 11 o'clock, you will have about 20%. But again, this is not a smartphone that lasts you for two days on a single charge. Uh, but the good thing is that you have that 25 watt charger. Uh, so it charges actually pretty quickly now if we talk about uh, the gaming i didn't do a v v uh, what do you say very very heavy gaming because this is a business centric smartphone i did play pubg for about uh, uh, five uh, seven minutes and it played fine but apart from that i didn't do any uh, more gaming on this now moving to the camera the camera setup has been actually improved if we uh, compare it with the note 9 we now have a triple camera setup uh, we have a 12 megapixel main camera with variable aperture then we also have a 12 megapixel that is uh, actually a zoom lens and uh, then finally we also have a wide angle lens uh, uh, that's the 16 megapixel and also you have the depth camera on uh, this one 
and moving to the front facing camera it's a 10 megapixel front facing camera that we have and i would say uh, if we talk about the rear facing camera in outdoor conditions as you can see with the sample shots uh, the camera performance is actually really good the colors are punchy and good uh, uh, and uh, you also have that wide angle lens which i particularly like uh, so in outdoor conditions i felt that the camera performance is actually pretty good but when you move to indoor lighting conditions like this this is artificial lighting conditions here i noticed that the saturation level is a little bit on the higher uh, side and some of the skin tones for example these are the sample shots that i've took of myself they come out actually uh, particularly uh, dark and uh, sometimes when you use that portrait mode or stuff it does that extra smooth thing so i was expecting slightly better camera performance hopefully with future software updates they can improve uh, it uh, so i would say the camera performance is actually pretty good but again i won't say that this is among the best uh, rear facing cameras that i have seen uh, again that would go to the pixel series i would say the pixel series in artificial lighting indoor lighting conditions do a far better job than this one if color accuracy and everything dynamic range etc is included now if we move to the front facing camera it's a 10 megapixel front facing camera and here are some of the samples taken with this one but in indoor lighting situation as you can see some of the samples that i've taken in this same lighting over here and as you can see it just whitens up your images quite a bit and again i i just took this uh, picture here in the same lighting and as you can see it just making an over brightening it up so the white balance is a little bit off and it does add that skin smoothening even if you disable uh, what do you say beauty mode and everything with the front facing camera so the front facing camera gets the job done but again i would say again it's pretty average i would say uh, if one thing i would love to uh, see improved is the front facing camera's uh, performance in indoor lighting so that was uh, regarding the camera on this one uh, so these were the things that i liked about uh, this device and yes there is obviously that s pen so that makes the note series uh, what it is uh, so you have uh, the s pen features i won't get uh, too much into this s pen features but you have the quick note and all those things these things work this we have seen even in earlier note series so all those features that we have seen in the earlier note series are there even i personally like the screen right just you can just take out and write the notes over here like this or reminders so this is actually pretty good uh, so this was there even in the note 9 so that is something is there you can just save it and it gets saved automatically so i like that feature uh, but uh, now the S Pen has been technically improved in certain areas, I would say, uh, but I would say in some of the other aspects, sort of a gimmick, but let's now move to the cons section. So let me just bring this page and okay, here are the cons. And this is uh, something that I have uh, noticed on uh, this one. And as you can see, the phone is really, really big. And when you hold it and I was taking calls like this, as you can see over here, it digs into my hand like this. And on long calls, it just because it's not curved over here it really digs in your hand and for very long calls over 10 12 minutes i was feeling a little bit uncomfortable because already the phone is re really really big and it uh, digs in your hand so in that aspect i would say it's just little too big uh, to be comfortable personally for me if you have really big hands that might be a different situation but again i have tested hundreds and hundreds of phones and i'm used to big size phone but this is this one just feels slightly too big to be comfortable to take very long calls personally for me uh, now let's move to the next thing uh, because it's really really big like this uh, let's uh, just open something like youtube or whatever so as you can see let's just open up this one of my own videos let's just skip this ad so as you can see this is the video and i really like the fact that it's almost edge to edge so you get a very immersive experience on this one but again as it's like this many times what i have noticed is that accidentally i'm touching the corners on this one and skipping tracks that youtube if you just touch uh, it skips to 30 seconds so this is something that i have noticed and this is happening again and again i would say because the screen is just too close to the edges and accidentally i am noticing quite a bit of uh, touches it's not just even on youtube also but some with the streaming apps like netflix etc also i have noticed so again that is something you have to note again i never had a, this problem although even the s10 plus is really big i never had that sort of a problem but that is that what i have noticed 
repeatedly on this note 10 uh, plus uh, now uh, another thing that i really do not like is that i don't know why but they have removed the 3.5 mm headphone jack so you have to rely on bluetooth headset and yes that supplied akg uh, usb type c headset is good enough but they should have given even a what do you say usb type c to a 3.5 mm headphone dongle uh, because uh, that would have been much better but uh, again many of the vendors are removing the 3.5 mm headphone jack now samsung also has started doing that with this one now another thing to note is that all the buttons are on the left side we simply don't have any buttons on uh, uh, this one so everything is on this and again for that also you have to get used to uh, the same uh, i've gotten used to the same but i miss the fact that the power button should have been on uh, this side but everything is on uh, this side but eventually i would say you get used to the same uh, now if we talk about the s pen the s pen now uh, as i've told you has a lot more functionality let's open this camera app over here and now this also has a gyroscope and stuff uh, uh, even the note 9 uh, we had a bluetooth uh, what do you say uh, connection uh, but this also has a gyroscope and stuff and now what if you press this button you can do these are known as air gestures and i'll try that if i can just move between the modes as you can see like this without touching the button i don't know but in the last seven days i frankly did not have any use of doing this you can even move to the rear facing camera like this so yes it works these gestures work particularly well in the camera app but i frankly feel this is sort of the gimmicks area uh, the only functionality that I would say you might use it as in the selfie just press this button and it takes a selfie but that was also present on the note 9 so yes we do have some new gestures with the s pen but particularly uh, i haven't used it in the last one week maybe you will like it but i frankly feel those fall in the gimmicks department uh, now another thing is the that uh, there is a that case supplied in the box on this one but i feel the quality of the case is very cheap this is sort of that rubberish case and you put your note on this it feels a little bit cheap they should have actually gone with a better quality case like what they did this is a plastic thin plastic case what they have given with the s10 plus uh, so i don't know why samsung cut uh, corners on this because even with the case on this one the s10 plus actually looks really nice but this one simply does not look nice and you might have to go with the external case and the problem with, with the case is that already this phone is so big and after applying the case it becomes even bigger so that is again something you have to note so these were the uh, cons and lastly yes i how can i forget about this is the pricing in india this starts at rupees eighty thousand in india that makes it one of the most expensive samsung phones in india i like the old uh, note 9's pricing it was about 67 or 66 thousand but uh, this one at 80,000, certainly Samsung is charging quite a bit of uh, premium for this one. And uh, to sum it up, I would say uh, this is a smartphone for people who really are going to use the S Pen. You think that you're going to really use the S Pen and really like a really, really large screen and have really big hands, then you can certainly go with this one. I also like one fact uh, is that this also has that Samsung Pay with MST. Uh, so that is something that I would uh, say uh, that I like. Uh, but again, most of those features are also present on the Galaxy S10 Plus. So if you really don't think so that you're going to use the Galaxy S, uh, what do you say, the S Pen, then I frankly feel that the uh, Galaxy S10 Plus might be a better and a more practical device anyways guys uh, that was my review of this uh, samsung galaxy note 10 plus what do you guys think about the same and if you guys are still not subscribed to my youtube channel hit that subscribe button this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys